Hi everyone, today we're going to look at the BRICS PLC drum instruction. Now the drum instructions are great tools when you have simple sequence of events that need to occur at a set interval or as a result of an event. They actually mimic the electromagnetic drum sequencer. Now the BRICS series uh, drum has this in the instruction set itself. Have you ever seen the mechanisms of a music box? And if so, it's a little drum with pegs that catch and flick and chimes in a particular sequence to play whatever tune is on the drum. So the PLC you have is a drum driven by an event. Inputs from a limit switch or button or a time. So let's discuss the drum instruction and look at an example of controlling traffic lights with a crosswalk signal. Now what you'll see is that I'm connected with my PLC uh, through my USB port which is located right here on the PLC and we're currently right now in program mode. So if we look at this instructions itself what we do is we will set up um, our drum heap function or our heap instruction which is we call traffic lights. What this will do is automatically reserve a bunch of different uh, parameters that we can set for our drum itself. And if you look over here, those heap instructions will set the step, our time left, our state, our run, and our done. So we can monitor those elements um, for our drum itself. So we call this one traffic lights. Our set preset or step preset is set for one. This means that when we have a reset to the drum instruction, where will it go back to? In our case, it'll be step number one. If we put a variable in here like a, a register, like V0, what'll happen is then we can set V0 to uh, different uh, numbers and when we hit the reset, it will go to that particular uh, place. And we've done this before in our example of the palletizer that we did with the factory I.O. Um, and there'll be links for that um, in the notes below. So what we do is we set up our outputs here. And these are physical outputs, Y0 to Y6, corresponding to um, Y0 to Y6 on our controller. And what we do is we set up, in this case here, we're going to do time sequences. Since we're doing traffic, light, traffic lights, what we'll do is this will be my red, yellow, and green for one side and my red, yellow, green for the other side. So what we'll do is start off with two red lights, then we'll go, um, sorry, red, green, yellow, then green, and then red, and then we'll have yellow and then red and we back to red red then on the air side we'll go we'll have red green and then red yellow and then we don't do the next step because it goes back to the beginning again so you can see the full sequence of events that are going to occur and all we will do is if we want to change anything we would just hit it and it would change it and turn it on or off for that particular sequence so we'll just to cancel that. So basically all we do is fill in a chart that we want to happen within our drum mechanism. So again, turn anything on or off as just a, just a click of a button. We can turn them all red if we want. So that's the sequence of events that we want to happen. These are the time frames. So we're going to have red, red overlap for three seconds. This is all in milliseconds, as you can see up here. We are going to then turn the green on for 10 seconds. Then we have a, a yellow for two seconds. Then a red, red overlap again for three seconds. A 10 second green and then a two second yellow. So we'll say, okay. Now we're back into our, our program. And on our program itself, we have a few inputs to this um, unit right now. And we have a uh, an on, an always on. So this is always going to activate our drum. We have a, um, a drum a jog input. So this, what this will do is allow me, as my drum is running, if I do not want to wait for the next step to occur, I um, energize this. This will automatically jog me to the next step um, on a leading edge. And you'll see this little uh, arrow sign right here. It just means that we have a leading edge 
condition on that input. Then on our reset condition, we have the first scan flag. So what we want to do is every time that we lose power to the PLC and power back up again, we will use the first scan flag to reset that drum mechanism back to the our preset of the first step, which is our red red condition. So we want to start off with red red before we move it anywhere else. Then we have or we have our drum lights done. So or if we have our uh, end of our drum sequence, it then starts back to the beginning again with red red. So then we can also add in our program, which we have, is our traffic signal um, lights. So what we have here is we have a pedestrian signal. Now, um, what we do is we monitor the step in the sequence and we allow the signal to change when the current green, um, but ensure that the signal is remembered. So what happens is if we're, if we're currently at green and someone hits the pedestrian light, we want to make sure that we remember that signal that they've hit it, but not change it until the next sequence around, then do it. So in our condition here, what we do is we set some bits. So with the pedestrian signal, we set the bit. And if our uh, set bit is condition is set and we're not um, in the green, um, then what happens is it sets this other one here and our pedestrian uh, crosswalk signal. If it's equal to our green, then we actually energize Y3, which is our output for a pedestrian on the first one. And then what happens is when we um, are off of that uh, green flag and we've, we've set both the um, flags, then what happens is it will reset our uh, pedestrian walk flag. And we do the same with logic for the pedestrian signal for logic uh, two, so which is the other set, so the other green going the other way. So currently right now we are in uh, uh, program mode, so let's turn that into run mode. And now we're running our program. You'll see right now it'll actually follow through the events. We can see our inputs change, our outputs changing. We currently have a green with red. And you can see that on my physical output there. Now we go red, red. Now we're going green here. We'll go to the uh, yellow and then back to red, red again. So this is working exactly as we thought it would. Now if we move down and let's try a pedestrian walk. So let's just uh, uh, force this on. And then we'll unforce it. So there's my pedestrian walk signal. See it right here. So as it's green, we're walking through and now it turns off. And we can actually do that for the other side now. And the other side here, we'll force it. But you notice it was green at the time. So now it's holding it on until we turn green again. So we'll unforce that. And then what you'll see is we have a few seconds left. So now our crosswalk is on and it remembered from the last time that input was green. So there's the drum instruction. Now if you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. You can give us a thumbs up on YouTube so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to ACC Automation and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data locking. And the third thing to do to help us out is tell a friend or colleague about the site. Now, all the links that you see in downloads 
can be found on our website at ACC Automation and you'll see that there's a company um, website version of this video so you can um, go in a little more detail of all the parameters and all the things that we've set within this program and the reasons why. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.